listen, quantum physics is the most valid science on this planet and principle number one, quantum physics, consciousness is creating our life experiences. You want to change your life? You don't change the world. You change your own consciousness. The world changes after that. As weird as that sounds, that is what the principle of quantum physics is. All of this is a manifestation of consciousness and spirituality, according to quantum physics, which is interesting because they use the word spirituality, which conventional science doesn't use because it's an energy field. Everything is energy. And to get down to the simple level is this. Everything is energy. And when things, energies interact, they can have various impacts on each other. I'll give the two extremes. Two energies come together and they're in harmony with each other. The result is you add up the energy of both and that's a much more powerful energy. So two people with lower energies come together in harmony. They manifest an energy collectively that is more powerful. That's called constructive interference. Uh, but I'll give you the name that people use is called good vibes. You find yourself where the energy on the outside is in harmony with the energy on the inside. And then when the two come together, because they're in resonance and harmony, there's a, a feeling of more empowerment. In contrast, the other way is an energy uh, that is opposite of each other are called destructive interference. And I say, what does that mean? When they come together, they don't add up. They actually cancel each other out. So two energies can neutralize and there's no energy at all. That's called bad vibes. <laughs> and that's what you feel when you're feeling bad vibes. You're feeling a threat. Why? Your energy is compromised. You're feeling weak and vulnerable. So everything is an energy interaction. And it's so powerful. I go, you know what's interesting? Just to give us the meaning of it. I use the example of a snail. A snail comes out of an egg. There's no mother. There's no father. There's no snail school. I said, how the hell does a snail just come out of the egg? Uh, navigate the environment. There's one gauge on the dashboard, energy. I go, significance, energy is life. <laughs> you have a lot of energy, got life. You have no energy, got no life. So basically the snail is moving around, reading the energy. If the energy is enhancing, constructive, good vibes, the snail keeps going that way. If the plant, does the energy of this plant make me feel powerful? Or if I take this energy, it's gonna cancel me, it could kill me, okay? Well, it depends on the uh, on the gauge. If the gauge says, oh, this plant has higher energy if I eat it, then that's my food. But if this plant, I read it and I feel weaker because my energy just got canceled, I said, don't eat that one, <laughs> take away your life. Uh, where do I go? If the energy and the moving in direction is good, I keep going that way. But if all of a sudden I feel a, a cancellation of my energy, I'm gonna turn around and go the other way. So I say, the entire behavior of that snail is predicated on what? Read the energy. I go, guess what? Same for us. We move according to our receptivity. You always move toward those people that give you better energy, higher energy, and avoid those people that cancel your energy. Bad vibes, I don't wanna be here, I'm not going. Quantum physics said, first of all, the idea of a material physical universe, it's not real. There is no physical universe. I go, what do you mean there's no physical universe? I touch myself, here I am, I see you. I go, it's a physical universe. I go, it's an illusion. Because what quantum physics found out is the atoms that we perceived as the little bits of matter that come together and create us. Here is a piece of matter called Bruce, a lot of matter in here. The quantum physicists recognize that if you open up that atom and look deep inside, there's nothing physical in it, it's an energy. So atoms are energy. But when we perceive them, they look physical. I go, that's an illusion of light <laughs> that has to do with that. So it took me a while because I kept reading the science and going, oh, that sounds great. And it's like, at some point it's like, no, wait a minute, what the hell does this really mean? Uh, and it means that we are energy beings, okay? There's no physicality here. And our energy is then related to the energy of the world around us. Are we living in harmony with that energy or we're not living in harmony? Good vibes, bad vibes, that's what it comes down to, okay? And then I started to recognize a very important thing, and this is the most important one for me personally was, no two people are the same in the sense that 
I can't take my cells and put it in your body because your body will say not self and your cells in my body, not self. So there's a self and then I try to find out, so where the hell is this self? And I say, well, there are antennas on the surface of the cell like TV antennas and no two people have the same set of antennas, meaning you're getting a broadcast different than I'm getting. I say broadcast, I say, yeah, the antennas are on the outside of the cell. They're reading something from outside. I go, oh. Then who are we? I say, we are the broadcast being picked up by the antennas. We're not the antennas. We're the broadcast picked up by it. And I go, well, why is that important? Because the broadcast is an energy field. And I say, oh, then each of us has our own unique energy field. I go, yeah. And that was the part that transformed my whole life because it basically says, wait a minute. I'm receiving like the Bruce show, and this is the TV playing the Bruce show. You got the... When we were watching a TV and TV breaks, we say TV's dead. I go, yeah, TV's dead. It's not working anymore. My question, which I realized at some point was, did the broadcast die when the TV died? I go, no, it didn't. The broadcast is always here. You get another TV, plug it in, tune it in, you're back online again. I said, oh my God, I'm not this body. I am the broadcast being picked up by this television set that you see right here. And then the thing that hit me was the TV an uh, analogy. Well, the TV's dead, but I'm still here. Go, oh my God, we can't die. We were never even in here. <laughs> and that was the wake up call that said, the fear, which is human specific, is the fear of mortality. There's no other organism that knows it's going to die. And I say that fear is what then we gave up our power to have somebody assuage that fear. It's like, oh, it's not so bad or whatever. You know, we, we bought what? Religion. Why did we buy religion? Well, I'm going to tell you about what happens after you die. The big mystery. And I say, oh, then all of a sudden, guess what? They made the program for my life. I go, who the hell are you to make a program for my life? Well, I bought it because I was in fear. And fear means I have no power. And when I have no power, I'm going to seek someone who says they have the power. And then I'm going to accommodate what they do. And so people join in a religion because they have the fear of the afterlife. Well, I'm going to tell you the beautiful part about my research was I didn't believe in spirituality. Okay. I had no, to me, afterlife was, oh, I'm chemicals, and when I die, I go back into chemistry. You know, that's what it is. But when I understood this, I said, oh, my God, I'm an immortal entity. I'm a spiritual field, quantum mechanics, a field. And all of a sudden, I started to realize, oh, my goodness, I have no fear. Why? I'm not going to die. I'm not even in here. So how the hell am I going to die? And once that fear was gone, my life was radically different. I tell you why. Because we all live with that biological imperative that says, I'm afraid to die. <laughs> and I said, but what if you're not afraid to die? What if you don't see death as an end? What if you see it as just a transition into another way? And all of a sudden I say, what the consequence of that is? No fear. I'm more powerful because it was the fear that took away my power. And if I don't have fear, then you can't scare me. I'm not scared. And I don't care about your rules about afterlife because I have my own understanding now. You don't have to try and tell me about afterlife. I know what I am. I'm a spirit. I'm an energy field. And this was profoundly important because uh, as a science guy, I was like, wait, there's a spirit, a field, and a body. I say, why have both? Why not just be the spirit? I always joke, I say, that's when I found out I had Jewish comedian cells. <laughs> I said, <laughs> I asked a question, why have a body and a spirit? Why not just be a spirit? And my 50 trillion comic cells answered with a question. I asked why I have both. The answer came, Bruce, if you're just a spirit, what does chocolate taste like? It's the most profound thing that ever came into my head at that moment because I said, basically, oh my God, the body provides us with sensations pain, love, joy, happiness, anger, <laughs> whatever. It comes from this mechanism. It's a mechanism. The eyes take in light, but they don't see light back here in the brain. They see energy vibrations. Sound comes in my ears. I don't hear the sound, I hear the vibrations. Taste, that's a vibration. It's a chemical vibration. And all of a sudden, oh my God, this is a transducer. 
It takes life experiences in a body that gives us vision and smell and taste and touch and pain and love and joy. And, and this is sent back to our source. So we came here to have life experiences. Go out and taste it and touch it and feel it and smell it and do whatever you want. And if it's really good, do it again. And if it didn't work out so good, then don't do that one again. You came here to have these experiences. Why would you want to waste your life having all the negative fear, anxiety, the, all those problems? It was a choice. It was consciousness. But we didn't know that because we were programmed to be victims.